Queen. Queen does this. Queen Victoria. Queen Elizabeth.
But anyway, we'll take a drive around town and and uh, right here, this red building, Francis Creek Inn, used to be a, a beautiful kids are having a good time. It used to be a beautiful old hotel, three story hotel. And uh, they they tore the that hotel down. And that was kind of the impetus to start to restore and maintain things on Main Street because people thought it was horrible that they had torn that beautiful old hotel down. Uh, if you get a chance, if you have time, you should go in that store. Uh, Jack Mays was a local artist. There's uh, local sculptures that he did. Uh, we've got one at the museum. Really a pretty street. This house... Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. oh my god. This this house is interesting. It was a man named uh, Emil Calancini that owned it. He was a banker here in town. He, he was involved with Bank of America. Uh, the view from up at the top of the cemetery on a day like today is just absolutely beautiful. Yeah, because you can see the whole valley, you can see the town, you can see everything. Ray Hillman, step on tour guide, welcoming you to Eureka, a really distinctive community and a lesser known part of California. This is the Eureka Inn on the right. It has more redwood in it than any other building in the world. It was finished in 1922 as a tourist hotel with local investors and it was to cater to the auto tourists that were coming in greater numbers as the Redwood Highway became an all-year highway. even has a drive-up entrance, which is still in use today, perhaps one of the oldest, if not the oldest, drive-up entrances in the state. It was a rather obscure post. Uh, it did have a number of officers here that were of importance on both sides of the Civil War. Uh, but the best known of them all was Captain Ulysses S. Grant. He was here for five months and hated this place. Because as you know, the coast redwoods are the tallest living things in the world. The current record is 379 feet. So they were working with very tall trees, often with diameters of 8 to 10 feet. So they had to have specialized tools to do this. The Skid Road terminated at Skid Row. And Skid Row was a... Uh, a group of saloons and uh, brothels and cheap hotels 
and that term has been borrowed and taken far from the uh, the, the lumber country for reference to any undesirable run-down part of town called Skid Row. So actually the word Skid Row is a, a logging term. How did they lift the log up on there? They had a steam donkey to help them oh. do it, yes. <laughs> they, they'd have a, a stiff leg crane or just a, uh, a, a swivel type uh, crane and, and lift it off the ground. Mm -hmm. you know. oh. So it's particularly fine streetscape on the left. Uh, the, these buildings 15 years ago were very, very dilapidated, but uh, we saw merit in their restoration and now they're back as part of our, our economic uh, base. Uh, coming up on the, the right, the big green building, this was the leading hotel in the city from the early 1870s into the 1950s. You know, this was the playground for the the sailors, the loggers, the railroad men, the fishermen, and the Indians. So this is a National Register Historic District with about 200 buildings of architectural and historical interest. So it's uh, still painted the, the same uh, color combination that it was when it was completed back in 1886. It's always been uh, shades of green. The building to the left was added over 50 years ago by the club. Well, we're going to travel over three bridges to our lunch site. These bridges were constructed by the state of California as an industrial hall road because there were way too many trucks trying to make use of the, uh, uh, the highway. Um, so over on the right, just as an interjection, see that pink building? Uh, that is owned by the, the Weot tribal group and it's part of a ceremonial ground that they reestablished on Indian Island after decade after decade of not being able to hold their ceremonies on what they considered their uh, spiritual center of the universe. And they, they were massacred on this island during their ceremonies in 1860 and they had no ceremonies here until last spring. Wow. So they, they've gradually acquired the island in two different parts. They bought an old shipyard that had been put up for sale and got it less than three acres back. And then the city of Eureka owned the rest of the tip of the island. And they decided, well, they, the native people certainly have good intentions and they're not going to put a casino out there, they're going to have their ceremonial grounds reestablished, so they gave it to them. They gave them the whole tip of the island that they didn't own already. So uh, that, that was an amazing thing. Now we're now crossing the, the third bridge, and this is not leading to another island, but a sand spit, which is very, very extensively developed over 5,000 years to separate the Pacific Ocean from the, the bay. This used to be a bay open to the ocean, but with the uplift of the bottom of this bay with earthquake activity, it was no longer at sea level. And then as a result, a sand spit was gradually formed by the uh, sand blowing ashore from the, the, uh, the current that was running off uh, this, this coast until it built up into the very substantial spit it is today was a lumber company-owned town. You know, 
They, they own all the houses, the, the store, the office building. This is a particularly interesting uh, street. The, the buildings on the left are the oldest in the community. They date back to the early 1890s, and some of them are uh, uh, portions of guest houses that were built out here for a failed beachfront resort community. And then on the, the right are some more of those gambrel roofs of, that I was telling you about that are patterned after Dutch barns. So one time they, they just had board sidewalks and a, a sandy street. Yeah. So let's just hesitate here uh, for a moment. Uh, we're opposite the, the long closed up uh, company store on the, the right. The Hammond Lumber Company office building has now been partially converted into a volunteer uh, fire department. And straight ahead, the little red building was the only post office I've ever seen where you had to cross a railroad track to get to it. <laughs> and it still has a postmark, Samoa, California. Now you might wonder, how in the world did this place get the name Samoa? Samoa, yeah. Well, there were never any Samoans in Samoa. We'll, we'll get that taken care of right away. It was named for patriotic reasons, much in the same way that places were named and renamed Kennedy in the 1960s. But in the late 1880s, the United States, after a brief war with Germany, acquired what we now know of as American Samoa. And that made us an imperialistic power. And there was a, a lot of patriotism about that. So across the nations, businesses, streets, parks, and one town were named Samoa. And this was all in, the, in, in uh, the early 1890s. Now, getting back to the post office, uh, that was originally built as a, a timekeeper's house, or office, I should say. And later it was the nurse's station. And then finally it became the post office. This is our rundown building on the left was the clubhouse for the bachelors that were uh, housed in this area, bare to the right now. And the, uh, the bachelors lived in bunk houses that ringed this uh, parking lot. And the, the cookhouse served the, the single men that worked in the, the mills and on the railroad and on the docks. Uh, it's run in the, in the same premise as the, the woods cookhouses, but there were no lumberjacks here. You know, the, the, the lumberjacks were out in the woods. They wouldn't come here for their meals.
Robin Cohn and I'm Mount Shasta's Fun Guide and I'm your tour guide today. We're going to have a great day. It's beautiful out and uh, get ready to head up the mountains. Her name is Robin no. Cohn, K-O-H-N. Welcome to Robin. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome to Mount Shasta. Yeah. You could have picked a better better day with our weather, so but we're supposed to get a little rain next week. So it'll be a full day today. We're first going to head up to the Castle Lake area. How many of you have been here before? Oh, so most of you are newbies, and uh, the rest of you who've been here, I bet there'll be places you haven't been to. <laughs> and yes, we do have lots of wildlife, and I have noticed that we've had a lot of bears out. I see a lot of scat. Yeah. They're coming into town. They're hungry. Um, this year, I mean, the apples, amazingly, with our drought, um, the apples are in abundance and the bears are loving it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and this is, um, like I was saying, this is created from glaciers. And the deepest part of Castle Lake is the cliffs back here. It's 120 feet deep. And this is a 54-acre lake. And like I said, it's one of our jewels of the area. You see why it's really beautiful. And during the winter months, this freezes over, and people come up here, and they go ice skating and wow. fishing. And, of course, we ski this. We ski this whole area here. Now, I'll tell you the names of the peaks here, and I guarantee you, you will not forget this. Over here, we have Left Peak. Over here, we have Middle Peak. And over here, we have Right Peak. <laughs> on Mount Shasta, the main boulevard, and this was once known as Whiskey Row, and coming up on our left, I'm just going to point out Adamon's, it's a Thai restaurant, and it's right here where this tree is, on our left, Adamon's, good Thai food, Soul Connection on our left, that's a great crystal shop, Yak's here, good coffee, and right here, the Veterans Club, the oldest bar in Mount Shasta, and the Coffee Connection here which is that brick building that was the first brothel and it's the only original building on where Whiskey Row was once. So I know what's on everybody's mind. How did Shasta get its name? Yes. And uh, there's a few theories to that, but it, the Russians, they 
believe, you know, Shasta is, means pure, and it's a Russian word, and that's basically where it came from. There's a few theories on that. So here is an excellent viewpoint of Mount Shasta and how I was talking about uh, modern Mount Shasta. So you see on the left, Shastina, and then directly in front of us is called Avalanche Gulch, and that was known as the Misery Hill eruption, and that dates back to 30 to 50,000 years ago, and that was the largest part of the Mount Shasta eruption, modern Mount Shasta. You can't actually see the summit from here, but from town you can. And then the oldest part of Mount Shasta is known as Sargent's Ridge, and when we get to the old ski bowl, I'll show the remnants of the crater of, of, of the oldest part of Mount Shasta. was located. <laughs> so that's why I was saying before, now you have the visual of what I'm talking about. Yeah. And after all those years, I was like, why did they put a ski resort here? <laughs> but they did. And, uh, and there were times it was good skiing, so from what I hear. So this is where the road ends, and we're just going to take a quick step out and everybody can take pictures. And you're going to notice that there's medicine rings up here. Actually, we'll keep going to the end. Yeah, you're going to notice they just fixed the road here. Nice and smooth. This right here is the lower parking lot, and we're going to go as far as we can. Up here. Yes.
one day, and you can certainly imagine what day that was. It was Christmas Day, and then nobody could sleep. <laughs> and by the way, and I thought this was an old wives' tale, right? But there was an old timer coming out last year, and he said, "You think this is an old wives' tale? When these machines stopped, we couldn't sleep because this noise was gone, right?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. Were they used for crushing the rock? Excuse me. They were used for crushing the rock. Uh, the the rock was. Uh, um, Stamped to a very, very fine powder. Yeah. Okay. And on the uh, on the dish which is coming out there is a table coming out here, right? And you will see that on the inside. Okay. I'll show that to you. Well, I'm Ruva Shana. I'm, I've been your tour escort and naturalist and guide on this trip. Uh, we hope you've had a great time seeing the redwoods, spending time around Mount Shasta, our trip through uh, Mount Lassen and the wonderful geologic uh, geothermal features there, um, and then coming to Grass Valley in Nevada City and learning about the history of gold mining and uh, seeing the beautiful fall colors. Hope you remember this trip forever and come on more in the future.